Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Darts Around the Globe. And welcome to a new season of the podcast series where you meet a new darts player from a new country every episode. And today we have yet again a very special guest. He will be a tour card holder in 2021 and he will attend the World Championship for the second time at just 18 years old. He's one of the biggest talents of this moment. It's Keen Barry. I'm Keen Barry from Ireland and this is Darts Around the Globe. Today we are joined by the biggest uh, talent of Ireland and he is a new tour card holder. It's Keen Barry. Keen, how are you doing today? How are you, Pim? How are you? I'm well, not too bad now. All good. Yeah, I'm doing uh, doing great uh, too. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about um, the darts. Um, how did you start playing darts? Uh, well, I started playing when I was uh, four. Um, my dad used to play all the time, so I kind of just used to... Uh, it used to be annoying him to, to throw with him and I always just wanted to do what he was doing. So but that's that's really how I got into it. I just was always practicing, always on the board, like from a very young age. So and when was the first tournament you played? Was it also, was it also at a really young age? Uh, yeah, I, I think I started playing tournaments when I was about eight because I was a bit young to be playing in tournaments when, when I was when I was four or so. So I used to just throw in the house and then when I was about eight, I think my dad used to bring me to the tournaments and play a few youth tournaments he was playing a lot of men's tournaments because maybe back then there wasn't as much kind of uh youth tournaments as there was men's but um yeah like it just kind of gradually grew into it and gra- gradually grew over time mm-hmm. and what moment did you think well um that you're a talented player uh, i kind of my, my my practice game was always pretty good but then when i went to the tournaments i never really kind of uh did as well as I should. That was probably when I was about maybe twelve, but um, thirteen, fourteen, I started to actually win a few Irish rankings, and then I I, I made the Irish team to play in the in, in Budapest for the, in twenty sixteen. So the, that rankings was for twenty fifteen. So I had a really good year then, and I, I just kind of carried on from there. I think I was number one for the next three years in the, in the Irish youths and did well at the World Masters. The kind of it just kind of started, it gradually grew and grew, so it did. So that's a, I kind of started realizing, well, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not too bad at this. I think it can do pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you have been part of uh, Team Ireland for, for quite a while. Um, yeah, How important was being part of the team uh, for your development in darts? Yeah, it, it's, it, it was amazing. It, it's an honor to represent your country at, at, at any level. So it is. So the first of all, that, that was the biggest thing for me. They just put on the Irish jersey and, and represent my country. But um, the experience you get from going to the likes of the, the likes of the Euro Cup, the World Cup, it's um, it, it's it's one of them things that not many people get to get to experience. And it, it definitely helped me along the way to to have the have the experience to actually be able to know what I'm. What I, I know what it's about. I'm, I'm actually able to throw my normal darts. I'm not that the whole kind of uh, event isn't overwhelming. Like so, it, it's the first year. The first year was tough. I think I got to the final in the first year, but mm-hmm. um, after that, just the, the experience of, of every single little thing like really, really like worked for me and, and it really helped me along the way. Um, yeah, and I mean, in the Team Ireland, you also traveled all around the world, you said. Also, of course, the BDO tournaments and stuff like that. Um, yeah, how is it to play against and competing against um, players from all around the world? And maybe, I mean, your your girlfriend is uh, from the Czech Republic. So I feel, do, do you already have a more international view of, of darts in your mind? Yeah, yeah like, I, I think I've been... Like I'm, I'm 18 years old. And I think I've been to to a lot more places than anyone is going to be in, in in their life. You know what I mean? Like so, to be able to travel travel that much and get the like I played darts in Japan, I played darts in uh, Holland, I played darts in Hungary. I played all over Europe and so even like in Japan was was the biggest thing for me with the World Cup. Like to even be able to go there and, and see what it's about. Like it it was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Amazing experience already at the. 18 years old um yeah let's talk about your season about your 2020 dart season and i mean you had a you had a great season um, um before we're going to talk about the winning of the tour card and the qualification for the world championship um at the beginning of the year you won the bdo world youth championship um yeah how does it feel to be the last ever bdo world youth champion yeah, it's it's amazing there. Like I remember, I played in the the fir- very first qualifier. I think it was twenty fifteen. Now I've always that was my whole always my goal was to be 
on that stage. Well, I thought a lakeside buff didn't turn out to be, but um, it's, it was always just that that goal to be the world youth champion. That was always my goal from the from the very start. So, but it it was always so close. I just could never grasp it. But then it was in the, in the last last year I finally got over the line. It was a uh, it was an amazing feeling, and it's just. It, Everything I work towards, and some people, some people work towards the goal and never, never get there. But thankfully, I actually got there in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talking about the video, um, was it an, an important part of your darts life? And do you feel sad the video is uh, lost now? Um, yeah, like it, it is. Like I've played in a, in a lot of video tournaments so over the last last few years. Like and it is sad to see it go, but it's. Um, I think now there's, I think there's going to be maybe bigger and better things coming up. So there is, there, there there's going to be somewhere to fill in, fill in the gap. So there is, there's going to be another organization. There's going to be more, more tournaments. So it, it's not the end of the world now, but it, it's, it is sad to see. But I think there will be something there to to replace. Mm. Yeah, I think one of those organizations to at least replace it a little bit is the PDC itself. Um, if you started this year at. Uh, Q school um, got in the final of the last day, lost against uh, Scott Wage, but with a really steady level. Um, was this the first moment you felt like uh, a great PDC se- season was waiting for you in that final? Or um, yeah, like it's I I was playing really like playing really well all day, and uh, I had to think it was a my 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 side was it was way ahead of uh, Scott, so I I was waiting maybe an hour and a half to play. Scott in the last game, but um, no, I just I think the weight kind of killed me. Like I, I didn't mm-hmm. throw as well as I should in the final. Like I, I played really really good all day. If I if I had to keep up the the way I was playing, I I think I would have bet Scott in the final. But that's that doesn't that's that's irrelevant really. But um, the the whole experience of of, of the Q school to know to know what it was about. Like it, it's so some people don't know what it's about. It, it it's really 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 tough. No matter how good of a player you are, like. So it's it's immensely tough. So they, 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 there's there's lads out there you might not even know, and they go in and beat you five 0 It's just it happened to me in the first day. It's it's just as simple as that. Like it, it is for anyone who wants to take that serious. And if you come through that field of Q school, you're you definitely you you have a chance of of doing well. Was Q school um, at least a good start of your season? Like talking about. Um competing against really good players did it give you some extra experience uh, towards the development tour and challenge tour uh, tournaments yeah yeah like the I, I knew my game was in a good place if you get to the final of the of, of q school like you know you're you're playing well so i took i didn't really take much negative from it i took all the positives put it into into my game and like and i knew i was playing good so i, I just uh, bring bring me game to the challenge short development tour and I, I think I did pretty well then after that. Like. Yeah, I'm looking at the development tour and challenge tour. Um, um, yeah, before COVID, there was already a weekend of both. Um, yeah, you played okay in them, but then um, after the whole lockdown, you played um, more than excellent. You got in the final of uh, development tour five and you've won the tournaments eight and nine. Um, and then also challenge tour, the fifth tournament of the challenge tour. Um, yeah, what made that difference um, between those two weekends? Because um, well, th- there was a big, big difference in uh, uh, achievements, at least. Yeah, but, um, I, I just, I just really put the effort in. Like I was playing, playing a lot over, over lockdown with um, online tournaments, played in the Modus League. Uh, that really helped, like because I, I think if if, uh, if it wasn't for them tournaments to keep you going, I would have uh, struggled a little bit, like to to keep. Because it's hard to be able to practice and you have nothing to work towards. But playing in them online tournaments and that, like it really did help. So it, it kept me on my toes, kept me fresh, kept me kept me prepared for the tournaments where maybe some lads weren't as prepared. So I I just went in and just kind of played my own game. Like and I never really uh, I wasn't even thinking about a tour card. I wasn't thinking about world champions. spot. I was just in in my in my head going. I was trying to get the best results as possible and get as far as I can and play good darts. And that was my whole goal, and it, it worked for me. So it did. Mm, yeah. Do you think that uh, you you played the like you said you played the Modus Live League um, for uh, for a couple of months? Um, do you think it uh, contributed to your real life darts level as well? And you might maybe had a, an advanced uh, position um, in in re- relation to the other darts players. Yeah, it was it was. Um, 
I thought it was brilliant to be even be even playing in it. Like to be to to get the call and ask if will I play in it? The likes playing against the likes of Martin Adams, uh, top players Dave Evans. Like you're playing against top top players, <coughs> top top players in this league. So you are. So it, it's even to be in, involved in that. It, it was brilliant and like the the standard of Darius was very very high for for everyone. Like so it was so it, it's it was definitely uh, it, it was brilliant to be able to play in that that sort of competition. Talking about that online darts, um, at a real life tournament you drive to the players, you go there, um, but the online tournaments are at your uh, house. Um, is it difficult to to find a routine in in online darts? And how was your routine? Yeah, it's it's weird to be honest. Like I, I wouldn't be, uh, I don't really like practicing in my house to be honest. Like it, it, it's, um, I find there's too many distractions. But I think in, in I just set up in my kitchen. I just say, could I make a cup of coffee in the morning or whatever, get practice, and no one really comes in or out of the kitchen. That's my kind of space for what the hell I'm playing for. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it's definitely weird to get used to for me because I, I would know I would always try to go somewhere to practice. I would wouldn't really be a fan of practicing at home. So I wouldn't because I just think there there's so many things that can distract you away from actually practicing. The little things as well, like it, just your your mind goes, and you don't get the proper practice what you should get done done. So, but um, yeah, I, I just I just have a little routine of, of coming down in the mornings, getting everything set up, and just no one really kind of bothered me. Every everyone stayed stayed in the whatever, living room or upstairs wherever while I was playing, and then when, when it was over, I took all the stuff down and went to went about normal life. Well, that's uh, that's a great great place uh, to be then. And um, let's go back to. Um, the development tour, um, yeah, I already said you won the uh, uh, the eighth and the ninth tournament. Both you've won uh, against Ryan Meagle. Um, you got you ended second on the final ranking, with uh, which meant you won a tour card. Um, yeah, what, what was going on in your mind when you realized you had won a tour card? To be honest, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't even know I won a tour card until my girlfriend told me. She was like, "You have your tour card here." I was like, "I don't, I don't think so." <laughs> well, I wasn't even in the rankings. I wasn't, but like it, it wasn't even in my mind. I was just going to 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 try and win, win as much as possible. Like, but um, when when I when I knew I did, I was thinking, just this this is amazing. Like, it's it's everything you work towards to be a professional dart player. So it is. That's that's the that, that's that's the dream. Now. But um, it's it's just time. It's just now about putting the effort in. Like as soon as I knew, as soon as I realized, my whole kind of thinking was. Like right home, couple of days rest, prepared for the World Championship and for the Pro Tour next season. Like it, it's non-stop kind of preparation. You have to be always on your toes, be prepared. Like because you're playing against the likes of Michael Van Gerwen, and Peter Wright, Garen Price, like you're gonna have to be on your game, or you're you're you have to stand no chance. So that's something you just have to put the effort in and and, and get stuck into it. Do you feel like you um, grew out of being a youth player and are now a uh, um, a Official adult professional darts player. Um, well, you, you could say that, but I, I think that this is still on on the development tour. Like there's a, I still have, I think it's maybe four, five, five years maybe left on the development tour. So still in in that sense, I still feel like a youth, but still playing playing on, on in the pro tour is definitely kind of a a bigger step sooner than I thought it would be. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's definitely a step in the right in the right direction to be. Hopefully, like in in just keep pushing towards the the up, up the rankings, and yeah, hopefully, okay, hopefully get where I want to be. Yeah, I mean, next year you will be one of the few uh, Irish uh, tour card holders. Um, did players like Steve Lennon or William O'Connor send you a message to congratulate you? Yeah, yeah, that um, Steve Steve uh, Steve sent me a message. Steve Steve always sends me a message when 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 I do well, and uh, I, uh, vice versa for me. Like the um, but. It's definitely a big, big help with them, with them guys in the tour. Like, if you sometimes maybe need a little bit of advice, or even just kind of a, a couple of friends, and you get there, you know, it kind of be, it, it's it's good to have them lads there, like that you know of, and and, and you're you're comfortable with them, and so it, it's definitely it's definitely a bonus having them guys there to to be to be sitting around and and, and with when the when the pro tour is on. Yeah, you you already quite know some other the tour card holders uh, probably, and um, do you already have? Some other people who you can um, um, like ask advice uh, to, or or something like that on the on the pro tour. Yeah, yeah, like I I know I know probably most most of the lads on the tour, like, but um, 
Barry Van Peer, he got his tour card there. We we've been good friends over the last maybe uh, two years, so he he be he be one of the guys very he see I go practice with him, he practice with me or whatever. So it, it is good to know other other guys too, like on on the tour and and a lot of guys know me from maybe see me winning a few things here on social media and that as well. So it is it, it's a big big help to be able to actually know a few guys and not just be kind of on your own. Like you be able to actually be interact with with different people. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure they will uh, know you at least, and uh, yeah, I think we'll be we'll be fine. Um, let's go to the challenge tour because, well, I mean, you already had your tour card and a world championship spot in the pocket. Um, it it surprised many people that you still attended the the last challenge tour weekend. What what was the reason for you to um, still go to the challenge tour weekend? Uh- well, the whole the whole reason why I went is because uh, I knew if I did well enough, I could get into the the winter series. Like if if it put me in a good position to to be in, in a chance of getting in, because maybe some guys will pull out or and it, it goes down the ranking. So my whole goal was to go there to just get get high enough in the rankings to be able to be in with a chance to get invited, because it'd be nice to be able to have a, have a free shot, kind of get get to know what it's about, like before next year when it actually properly starts for me. Mm-hmm. Maybe like just a free a free shot to be able to get the experience of it, see what it's about. So that that was my whole plan of going to Challenge Tour was just to try to get as high as I can, and and be be in with a good chance of uh, of getting into the Winter Series. Yeah, and it uh, worked out pretty well. The first tournament, you won the tournament uh, in the final against Michael Verberg. Um Yeah, you you played pretty well on the B- men's BDO circuit before, but did this Challenge Tour title feel as your first? Major senior title. Yeah, yeah that, like it, it's um, in January. Like I, I didn't play too well. I think I only got maybe two hundred quid. I got all, all board finals. So to definitely to be able to be back on the on the challenge shore and actually play play what I'm what, what I'm actually able to play was good. And, and to get the first win, uh, especially against uh, against Michael, like he he's a brilliant player. So he is. And um, it, it was good to get the win, in, get the win in that game, and kind of bring the confidence on from that whole weekend. It's it's very likely you're going to participate at the the Winter Series. Um, yeah, what's your agenda until that uh, will happen? From now on, are you going to practice? Maybe uh, meet some other darts players to practice with, or what's what what are you going to do to be ready for that tournament? Yeah, yeah, I'm just just staying on the board. Um, I I met up with one of the Czech guys, Tomáš Hodek, there uh, last week. I'm practicing online with a uh, Roman Benecki. So like the maybe maybe like um some people wouldn't know them, but they're they're definitely really really good good their players. Like mm-hmm. they're they're well able to push me. So uh, I think for me it's it's good to have them guys as as, as friends and to be able to, to be able to get you ready for for the big competitions coming up. So I'm just gonna be yeah just just being on the board and, and just be ready for the call. If it does happen, <coughs> and I guess the same for uh, the World Championship. Uh, you you had a great game against Vincent van der Voort uh, last year. Um, are you looking looking forward to play over there too? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like to, to, to get to get another chance at chance at the World Championship, it will be amazing. Like because uh, I, I felt like um, again against Vincent, I was the scoreline kind of was a bit unfair to me, but that's just the way it is. Like if he he was pinging his doubles every time, so the first two sets were three two three two. Like and he he was just. He played played really amazing. So, but um, to be to be getting another chance and hopefully go further and further in in the competition, it would be nice. Now, but to have the experience of playing it last year, for, I think it's only a big help this year to just go in and actually enjoy it and play play my own darts. Yeah, do, do you expect a little bit more of this year's World Championship? Yeah, I I, I think so. Yeah, like uh, with with the experience I have and, and how well I'm actually playing. I think I think I should do pretty well, but like everyone else is in the same position. So like you're not playing at the World Championship if you're not playing well. So everyone's in the same position. I think it's just about maybe um, just taking my chances when when they come to me and and don't don't let them by. Yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, thought right there. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about the WDF Virtual Cup. You uh, represent the Team Ireland uh, over your, over there. Um, yeah, you already uh, said positive things about the rise of online darts uh, this year. But um, yeah, how was it to represent Ireland um, also on the online darts stage? Yeah, like again, 
it was different, but um, it was still it's still the same to be able to represent the country. It's still it's still an honour, so it is. So to be actually uh, able to play, and um, like online, you've seen some lads kind of rise in 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 talent. Like it's that maybe you wouldn't have had the chance maybe in in the challenge tour or, or things like that. So you you get to see new players coming up. And uh, it was just be able, it was brilliant to be even a part of it so well, but sadly it came to an end in the last 32 against a, a good Czech player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Adam uh, Gaulas, you played. Um, yeah, I mean, he is a Czech player. You are in the Czech Republic now. Did you uh, play that game uh, in real life against each other or isn't that even allowed at the at the World Show Cup? Um, no, because he, he, he lives maybe four hours away from, from, from uh-huh. where I am. So uh, that 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 wouldn't work, but um, it's he he played really well now. Like I, I just think it was two one up, and he took out two two ton plus finishes in a row. So it's uh, he he played really really good, and he he deserves to deserves to win the game. Let's talk about uh, the darts in Ireland in general. Um, you're still a young player, so you know how the dart scene in Ireland uh, looks like. Uh, can you explain a little bit? Uh, about the dart scene in Ireland, um, are there different <laughs> leagues, super leagues, and different districts, or s- something like that? Uh, no, in in Ireland, there's just maybe um, the the Irish rankings. So there, there maybe I think it's eight rankings or ten rankings over the over the year, and uh, it's all in diff- different parts of the country. So pe- people travel there, they they they, they get points for 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 the world's rankings, and uh, whoever finishes in the top, I think it's top four. In the men's, youths and ladies qualify for the national team, but then there's also county darts, mm-hmm. which is um, it's a bit different in England now. It wouldn't be the same as county darts in England, but there there's normally kind of different kind of uh, different counties host competitions coming up to the big competition in February. It's the All Ireland, so that's the really big one you you want to win. So it is. So um, that's over played over three days. So there's, there's, I think it's doubles, team events, singles, and then the, the final day. So that's that's been played. My county won it. I think it was two years in a row. What in 2018 and 20? No, 2017 and 2018, I think. So, but um, that's that's kind of that's that's what's in Ireland. Like it's um, there is no really super league, but I, I think there should be a couple because there's definitely good enough players. To be able to put on and put on a good show for 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 the likes of that, like there there's more than enough good players in Ireland to be able to do something like that. But it's just maybe getting that done is the hard part. You will have a very busy schedule, and obviously, you will have a very busy schedule next year too. Um, do you still play some of those local county leagues or and 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 national rankings or or not? Uh, I won't be able to play in the national rankings because I have a tour card. And yeah. um, I think maybe on the on the county thing, I can maybe play the friendlies. So that's that's just them kind of uh, each county run of some competitions. I could be able to play in that if if I have a couple of weeks off and and it's on. I, I will try and be there. And even even for the county trials, like if if I'm not away, I, I will I won't play, but I, I will still go and watch and mark a few games and and help out. Like because w- without them type of things, I wouldn't be where I am. It, it's like you just have to think for for me you have to remember where you came from like all all, all the all these competitions you play and all the all the county trials all the local competitions helped me all along the way like so if it wasn't for them you wouldn't be I wouldn't be where I am now already thinking like a big uh, darts player right there um, you have experienced uh, darts in Ireland and the UK um yeah what are the differences and similarities between darts uh, over there I think just 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 in England there's just kind of uh, Bigger competition, so there is like with with the like it's it was a shame this year to see to see the um, players' championship not be in Dublin, but obviously it, it was for the the right reasons because it just with, with COVID and everything it, it didn't it didn't work out. But um for for me that that was kind of a shame to see that go because that was one of the the big big things in Ireland to have have a pro tour there have the World Grand Prix there. We had to see that go. It was kind of a bit of a a bit disappointing, but hopefully, hopefully the next the next year when everything well, hopefully it's back to normal. Like we'll, we'll be able to get them things back in Ireland, and, and hopefully maybe we can start getting more things on and, and actually start to to get them Ireland kind of more kind of um, developed as, as England will be within the competitions. You know, there's more big competitions going on in Ireland. That's 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 what I, I hope to see in, in the in the future. 
Let's talk about the future of uh, Irish darts. Um, with players like Katie Sheldon and, and other um, Irish players, obviously you, um, Ireland seems to be a talented place for, uh, for darts. Um, do you think the Irish youth is upcoming in darts, especially um, relative to uh, well, your past when you were younger? Yeah, I I think so. Yeah, like there, there's a lot more opportunities for for youth players now than maybe there was, say say six seven years ago. Like so, for for me, it's it's just about how do youths take the chance, take take the opportunity. Like to, to there's a lot of really really good players out there. Like Katie's really for me the really number one youth in in Ireland at the minute. But um, there is really t- a lot of top youth players out there. So it's just about how they go and and how they actually um. Like for for next year for the for the WD, for the yeah WDF Europe Cup, like for, for whoever qualifies for that, it's, it's how they take the keep the experience from that, and they go on and start to hopefully try to play with the JDC is brilliant too, like to, to be able to get the Irish players and maybe travel all over, get get into the likes of them tournaments to get the experience on board and just push on and hopefully just get the same rewards as, as I did. You are still the reigning uh, JDC World Champion too. Um, in what way do you think the JDC will play uh, a part in in the Irish darts development? Uh, I think it plays a big part because there, there's a few academies in in Ireland. There's maybe six academies, and um, it really just keep keeps lads interested. It keeps lads playing, and uh, and it, it keeps them hungry to play darts, and it, it will make them want to travel. It will make them want to play more. Like so, that, that's definitely a big part in it, and and the like. The competitions that's in England, hopefully, maybe even some JDC competitions come into Ireland, like because I think that there's definitely enough players there, and uh, like I think people will still travel from the likes of England, maybe even the Netherlands to to, to Ireland to play. Even if there's only one or two competitions in a year, like I think there's maybe twelve in England, so maybe if there's only one or two weekends of it in the year in Ireland, like I think it will be it will be massive for for the youth starts and uh, just to be able to to have it in in Ireland would, would definitely be a, a big big thing yeah I, I think I agree with you uh, JC uh, in Ireland will be a, a great uh, contribution to darts over there um, the last question uh, of this podcast you're still a young player um, what would you advise uh, young Irish players uh, want to be who want to become as good as you I for, for me I think you just put, put really put the effort in like it's you're you're gonna get knocks and and you, you think it's like you're not gonna be good enough or you think it's a, you're just not playing good enough or but I for me I just stuck in there like I've been through them things where you maybe think just it's not for me you know I'm I'm, I'm not not gonna be getting where I should be but I just put the effort in just stuck in there and. and um, I, I finally got where I was like the, the more the, whatever effort you put in you get out of it like. So it is. So the, the more the more effort you put in, is that you will you will get your rewards in the end, no matter how how long it takes to come. Like you will get your rewards, and just just keep practicing and, and just just keep up the up the good work. That's uh, great advice from you, Keen. Uh, thank you for joining this podcast, and uh, good luck at the Winter Series and the World Championship. Thanks very much, Ed. Thank you.